beginning with verse number 8. And there were, in the same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I believe that these shepherds probably never experienced another night quite like this. To this point and after this point, This wasn't anything but ordinary night. Because this was an anything but ordinary event. I don't know that you'll find anywhere in the scriptures where a celebration on earth occurred like this one. Even the death of Jesus and all that it entails, and believe me, I will not diminish from that at all this morning. That's why he came. Did not bring about this kind of celebration on earth. A Messiah was born that night in Bethlehem. And these angels met some shepherds. Think about who they chose to come to. Some lowly shepherds watching their flocks by night, just doing what they ordinarily do. No doubt went into that shift just thinking, man, I got to stay up all night. Some, Some of the shepherds would take the first watch. Some of the shepherds would take the second watch while the others that had taken the first would rest. And they'd switch off. Just thinking it was going to be another ordinary night. Another night in the fields. Another night doing what I always have done. Not necessarily a special people. God doesn't come to special people. See, they say it's very likely... That this was the same field or the same area where David would watch his sheep. The same area, the city of David. Amen. David wasn't anybody special. He was the youngest of many siblings. A boy who watched sheep for a living. For his father, really. Amen. But this night in the field. Amen. An angel. Of the most high God appeared unto these lowly shepherds to give the greatest announcement that the earth had ever heard to that point. Amen. What something that had been waited for, longed for, amen, long anticipated. Four hundred long years without a prophet. Four hundred long years. Without hearing anything fresh. Amen. 400 long years without hearing anything from heaven. Malachi was long gone. Four centuries in the grave. 
Amen. Clinging to a hope. Clinging to a promise that was looking dimmer and dimmer by the day, brother. Amen. That the ground was awfully dry. There were no plants growing. There were no prospects in sight. Amen. There was no real expectation that anything great was on the horizon. They're under Roman bondage. They're under Roman control. Oh, the city of David is a faint memory. They're paying taxes to heathens. Amen. They are in bondage to the greatest empire the world had ever seen to that moment. Amen. Rome had clenched their fist. Amen. On those Jews. Amen. And you're going to pay us. And you're going to do what we say. Amen. And you're going to do it how we say it. Amen. If you get to worship in your synagogue, it will be because we allowed it. Amen. It will be because of what we have done. If we want a census, amen, we're getting a census. You know why he wanted a census? He wanted to know how much more money he could get. Amen. He needed a count. He needed a count of the people. Amen. Because Rome needs some more revenue flowing in, amen, to its coffers. So you need to go back to your country of origin. Amen. And it seemed like it was as dark as a thousand midnights, brother. Israel, Israel is waiting for a Messiah. Amen. They're waiting for a deliverer. No doubt in their mind, they're thinking of a mighty king that will come and throw these dirty Romans off their backs. Amen. But I want to tell you, the angels did not appear. Amen. To a prince, to the princes. He didn't appear to Herod. Amen. He did not appear to the tax collectors. He didn't appear to the upper class of society. Amen. But he found some lowly shepherds in a field one night. Amen. Watching their sheep. Amen. To give the greatest announcement, the most glorious announcement that the world could ever have known to that point. Amen. He brought it down to ordinary men. Amen. And they were afraid. Amen. The angel had to say, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, fear not. Amen. There have been a lot of trouble in your land. There's been a lot of unrest in your land. Amen. But I've got a good, I've got good news for a change. Amen. I've got some good news for a change. Fear not. Amen. I bring good tidings. Amen. Of great joy, which is not just to y'all, but this is the hope of the earth. Amen. This is the hope of the world. Amen. The Messiah. Amen. Tonight, this night, in the city of David. Amen. In a little town called Bethlehem. Amen. The littlest of the cities. Oh, Bethlehem Ephrata. Amen. No one thought anything great was coming out of there. Amen. But in Bethlehem tonight, in the city of David, there has been born the Savior, not of the Jews, but of the world. Amen. A Messiah has been born this night in the city of David. Amen. And it says that after the angel delivered his message, amen, a great multitude, suddenly, amen, suddenly heaven broke out. Amen. Suddenly heaven broke out that night. Amen. And as I was reading this, amen, it has been said, amen, that there are the multitudes of angels, or in other words, Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of angels filled the sky that night, amen, to herald their king into the world. Oh, he was born in a little manger, amen, but heaven recognized who was sitting on the throne that night, amen, heaven recognized the king, the world didn't know him yet, amen, the world didn't recognize him yet, but heaven recognized its own, heaven recognized the king of the world, amen, a savior, a savior, amen, the deliverer has come, amen, in the form of a little baby, amen, there in Bethlehem, in a barn, in a barn, amen, where a 15, 16 year old girl, amen, without her mother there, amen, amen, without her family there, barely knows this 30 year old Joseph Carpenter, amen, who is standing by her side, giving birth among cows and cattle, amen, a savior has been born that night, amen, no doubt, Amen. As I was telling my wife earlier, amen, as I've thought about it this week, amen, of all the characters in the Bible that I admire, and there are many, I am not sure that I admire anyone more than Mary. I am not sure that I admire anyone more 
than Mary. Amen. This young girl, 15, 16 years old, amen, gets impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And she has to live for nine. See, we only get a snippet. Amen. Of really all that Mary went through. And we really kind of overlook Mary. And I know the Catholic Church does a great job of idolizing her. And she ain't no idol. Amen. But unfortunately, she probably gets diminished a little bit because of that. Amen. But nonetheless, nine long months. Amen. There might have been times the devil told her, look, you're going through, you crazy lunatic telling people you got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Amen. They all know you're a fornicator, Mary. You're just a harlot. You're just a harlot. Amen. Nine long months. Amen. Going through, amen, that pregnancy and holding on to this promise and amen, not knowing how the future's going to look and not knowing if Joseph is going to want to still stay by her side and amen, and all the, amen, maybe the talk in the family and the talk around the town and amen, for a 15, 16 year old girl. And then the census comes and she's not even going to have her family near her because she has to go to Joseph's birthplace of origin. Amen. She has to go where Joseph was born because she is contractually bound to Joseph because they are engaged. Amen. So for them to be counted, amen, she has to go with Joseph. Amen. It seemed like it was so disadvantageous to her. Amen. And then she's there. Am I going to get any support? Oh, Mary, you're going to get a lot of support tonight. Amen. Some shepherds you didn't even know. Amen. Heaven going to make sure you get what you need. Amen. You're going to make sure you get what you need. Amen. I believe, I wonder what she was thinking as she held that little baby that night. Amen. Not knowing all that he was going to face. Not knowing all that he was going to go through. And knowing, amen, that she was holding heaven in her arms that night. That she had been entrusted. Amen. That she had been vested with the trust to bring forth the Messiah. What an awful responsibility. What a great honor. Amen. That's why she said, they shall rise up and call me blessed. They're going to call what, what you're calling a curse today. What you're calling a curse today. Oh, you're calling me a harlot today. Amen. But someday, the generations are going to rise up and call me blessed. Amen. They're going to rise up and call me blessed. You have to look beyond the present tonight, this morning. You have to look beyond the circumstances at large. Amen. And you have to see what God sees. Amen. You have to look at it through the lens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And as these shepherds were sitting in the field that night and they got this message from God. Amen. To go. And this is why the angels had to tell, look, you're going to find, you're going to find the Messiah. You're going to find him in a barn. You're going to find him in a manger. Why? Because if they didn't get that information, well, they'd be looking everywhere for, for this king. The last place they probably would have looked. The last place they probably would have looked that night was in, a, was in a barn. Amen. With some animals. That's not where you expect. My God, your deliverance will come from the place you least suspect it. Amen. Your deliverance will come from the place you're going to least expect it, brother. Amen. See, God has designed it in such a way... That your little finite human mind cannot comprehend, amen, what he has in store. Amen, you cannot comprehend it. Amen, he will not allow you to. Amen, he will not allow you to. Why? Because it want, he wants it to be glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, amen. Amen, every battle, every test that you're going to face in this life, it is not for your glory. It is not for you. It is for glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. And they said glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. I want to talk this morning on peace on earth. Peace on earth. Jesus did not come to establish world peace. Because if he did, he failed miserably. Amen. He did not come. Amen. For all the nations to get along. Amen. Because we've had many wars down since this day of Jesus' birth. There's a lot of trouble in the land today. 
Amen. There is a lot of unrest. There is unrest in government. Amen. There is unrest in our country. Amen. The social and political divide is at a sharp divide right now. Is that a great contrast? Amen. There are many homes in disarray this morning. There are many broken relationships, failed marriages. Many children, every one of their siblings is not by the same set of parents. Amen. We have a mess in our world today. Our schools don't have the answers. Unrest in the education system. Amen. The devil has successfully broken down the home. Amen. Hollywood holds more influence over people's lives than any sort of morality. Amen. There is violence, drugs, alcohol. Amen. There is no peace on earth as of today for many people. And yet Jesus said he came to bring peace on earth. Amen. And as we were studying this, amen, what kind of peace did Christ come to bring? Why is he labeled the Prince of Peace? I believe that Jesus came with a singular mission. Amen. I believe that Jesus came with one goal in mind. And that was to set man at a right relationship. To put man into a right relationship with Almighty God. The peace that He came to bring was to bring man, amen, into a right relationship with Almighty God. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If your relationship with God is not correct this morning, I don't care what facade you may put on. Amen. I don't care how much you might, amen, appear to be enjoying, amen, life. I don't care how well you're putting it together. I don't care how much money you're making. Amen, I don't care which parties you're invited to. I don't care what people you're mingling with this morning. Amen, if you are, do not have a correct relationship with God, there is no peace unto you this morning. There is no peace. You are not at rest. There is no way that your conscience and your heart can be at rest when it is not in a right relationship with Almighty God. Amen. Romans chapter 5, please. Amen. We want to spend, I don't know where all this message will go, but we do want to spend a few moments, amen, discussing or preaching on the plan of salvation. Amen. And what God came to do for lost mankind. Amen. And then we have a few thoughts, amen, for those that are saved this morning. Amen. Romans chapter 5, therefore being justified. We're in verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith. If you are justified by faith, the scripture says, we have peace. We have peace with God. Brother, there is no peace outside of that. Amen. The only satisfaction you may get this morning is temporary at best. It's fleeting. Amen. It is but for a moment. Amen. Christ came. Amen. So that we could be justified by His blood. Amen. By the blood that He spilt on Calvary. Amen. He came to earth. Amen. To spill His blood. To be the perfect sacrifice. So that man could then, on the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, be put into a right relationship with God. And when you are in a right relationship with God. Amen. There is peace in your soul. There is peace in your soul. Isaiah chapter 48, please. Isaiah chapter 48. Amen. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse number 22 lets us know that there is no peace. There is no peace, peace saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Amen. There is no peace. Amen. I don't care what you attain in this life. Amen. I don't care, amen, how much your involvements have allowed you, amen, to enjoy the pleasures of this world. Amen. There is no peace. I was talking to a young girl even this week, amen, a student of mine, amen, 13 years old, just turned 13 years old, amen, and she told me, 
amen, that the only thing she has in her life that is bringing her any enjoyment is when she gets home from school and can go into her room and smoke weed. That's what she has in her life to look forward to. Amen, a beautiful young girl. Amen, no doubt has a future, has some aspirations. Amen, but I'll tell you why she's there this morning. She's there, amen, because it's not all her fault. It is not all her fault. Amen. It is because the influences, the people that were supposed to protect her, the people that were supposed to bring her up, amen, that is the very way in which she was introduced, amen, to that lifestyle. It wasn't a friend at school. It was not a friend at school. It was not a party she went to. It was right in her home. Amen. There are families, amen, that will try to make it look like they have it together. But you don't see the internal strife. Amen. You don't see what goes on behind closed doors. Oh, they'll come in arm in arm at the office party. Amen. They'll look like, amen, the perfect couple. Amen. They'll look like the perfect family. And then you find out, amen, a couple years later, or this, that, or the other, there were, amen, there was no peace in that home. Amen. There was no peace in that home. Amen. There are those, amen, that they have been dressed to the T. Amen. Have driven up in their sports car. Amen. Had money in their pocket. Amen. But, amen, sad to say, amen, they could not find any peace in that life. Amen. There are those that have ran the streets for years. Amen. Looking for some kind of thrill. Looking for some kind of excitement. Amen. I've talked to the ones that are sitting behind bars. Amen. This morning. Amen. That were looking for some kind of excitement. Amen. They were looking for some kind of thrill. But payday came one day. Amen. And there was still no peace. Amen. There was still no peace. See, listen. You enjoy the party. Amen. You enjoy the drugs. You enjoy the alcohol. You enjoy the lust of the flesh. Amen. But when it's all done, and when it's all over, amen, when the party's over, and the lights are off, amen, and the friends aren't around, and you're sitting alone, amen, there is no peace. There's still no satisfaction. Amen. You still can't get it. Amen. You look for it. You long for it. You try something else. Many people are living for one weekend and then the next weekend and then the next weekend. But it's not bringing any peace to their soul. Amen. And it's a never-ending cycle. It's a never-ending game. Amen. You search and you don't find it. You search and you don't find it. Amen. And so all the while, you're going deeper and you're going deeper and you're going deeper. Amen. Looking for something that you'll never find out there. People are looking for it in many things. Amen. As I was reading last night. Amen. You know, many people get involved in drugs. Amen. It can be because of one of, for a couple of reasons, drug abusers. One, it's who they affiliate with. It's who you affiliate with. Amen. Most drug abusers, before they became a drug abuser, affiliated with one first. See, you got to get those drugs from somewhere. Amen. And you're not getting it from the upstanding citizen. Amen. You're not getting it from the church-going, Bible-thumping individual. You're not getting it from the moral characters in society. You're getting it somewhere. Amen. And you affiliate with that. Amen. The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. There were very sweet young girls. Amen. There were very nice, trustworthy young men. Amen. That had futures. Amen. They were smart. They were intelligent. Amen. They had a bright career ahead of them. They could have had it all put together, but they got involved with the wrong affiliations. And for a moment of pleasure, for a moment of excitement, and you know, it's also this, it's acceptance. See, people are looking for acceptance somewhere. You're looking for some sort of acceptance. So you go with these affiliations, amen, because you feel they'll accept you. Amen. And you know why that need for acceptance is there? Because you don't have peace in your soul. You don't have peace in your soul. Listen, one scripture says we're accepted in the beloved. Amen. We are accepted in the beloved. If you're searching for acceptance this morning, amen, I know someone that will accept you. Amen. I know someone that will take you just how you are. Amen. And will change you. Amen. And revolutionize your life. Amen. And put peace down in your soul. 
Amen. Most people who are abusing alcohol this morning, and there is quite a few in this country. I won't give you the statistics this morning. Amen. But most people are alcohol abusers and won't admit it. Amen. Many of them are drinking to escape problems. To escape problems. Amen. I know people today that cannot handle any degree of stress unless they have a drink. Amen. That's why at the end of the day on Friday, amen, you'll have your coworkers checking out, letting you know where they're going. Amen. Because they cannot handle the stress of life. Amen. The stress of life. Amen. See, many people put on a good front. Amen. That they're just drinking because it's socially a fun. It's socially acceptable. Amen. You're trying to escape something. Amen. Many people tonight, this morning, are trying to drink away a guilty conscience. Amen. They cheated on their spouse. Amen. And they can't hardly live with themselves. Amen. They can't hardly live with themselves. Amen. They did something. They did something. There's some involvement there. And they don't want to deal with it. And so i got to escape it somehow. And the devil will have an escape for you. Social acceptance. Many people today will drink for social acceptance. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Why? Because they don't have peace in their soul. Amen. So they want to find that acceptance with those whom they are around. Lust. I can't think of a... Listen, our society is filled to the core with it. Amen. They are filled to the brim with it. Amen. People today are bound by sick, disgusting, perverted spirits. Sometimes it's even hard to preach about it. It's hard to even preach about it. Amen. But I want to tell you, it's so prevalent in our land today. People are looking for something to fill the void. And you know what's the thing about that road? When you go down that road, when you go down that road, there is no telling how far you'll go. The things that brought the excitement, the things that brought the thrill at one time, it begins to run out on you. Amen. And you begin looking in places you thought you'd never go. Amen. You start getting involved with people you thought you'd never associate with. Amen. You begin getting online and looking for things. Amen. That you would have never looked for. Amen. What would have been enough 10 years ago that the flesh just isn't satisfied anymore. Why? The flesh. It doesn't matter what vice it is this morning. It will not satisfy. And so you have to go deeper. And you have to go deeper. And you have to go deeper to find any sort of thrill from it anymore. There are people today that are bound by drugs, bound by alcohol, bound by lust. They don't want to be anymore. They like to get off the bus. Amen. They like to get off the train. They like to stop. Amen. But they got to find that thrill. They got to find that excitement. They got to find that peace somewhere. There are broken relationships this morning, broken families because of lust. Because of lust. Amen. Peace. And un peace is unknown to many homes this morning because daddy right. was looking at things he had no business looking at. Amen. Was flirting with the coworker at, in his office. Amen. That hired that new secretary. Brother, the great one. Amen. The great sin. The great sin of lust. Amen. Has gotten into many places and many homes and has ruined Families has ruined wives, has lose, ruined children. And as the home goes, so goes the church. And as the home goes, so goes the country. Been ruined with it. It's on the billboards, brother. It's online, brother. It's in the conversation. It's in the innuendos. Amen. It's everywhere you look. People are filled to with it in their mind. Can't even say something innocently these days. Can't hardly say anything innocently these days. Amen. Why? People have been robbed of a pure mind. They've been robbed of a pure mind. Sin will rob every good thing from you. Sin will take every good thing from you. It will take your innocency. It will take your purity. It will take your childhood. 
Amen. Many children have been ruined at the hands of lust and other and men that should have been protecting them. But because the thrill, amen, ran out a long time ago, I gotta find it somewhere else. I gotta find it somewhere else. Or because they were abused many years ago. Amen. They got introduced to something that they couldn't shake. Amen. Amen. And Christ came to put man at a right relationship with God. Many things could have been avoided if people would just do it the right way. It's become complicated. Sin makes things complicated. Sin come, makes it complex. Amen. I don't understand today. See, this is how the devil so deceives people. Amen. He will so make right look so unappealing. Make holiness look so unattractive. And glorify, and glorify the thrill and the excitement of sin. Amen. But, amen, you got to consider the end of the matter this morning. you got to consider the end. Listen, amen, I know people this morning, amen, that started out the same way I did. Came up in the same type of home I did. And I wouldn't trade my life with them for the world. Amen. Because there's something, amen, to be said. Amen. For doing it right and staying it right. Amen. There's some pleasures you'll forego. Amen. There's some involvements. Amen. That you'll forego. Amen. There's some things you're going to abstain from. And listen. Amen. Don't mess with your peace with God this morning. Oh, don't you flirt with it this morning. Amen. If you have peace with God this morning, you better not play a game with the enemy this morning. The Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. To abstain from it. There are some things that you need to keep... Far away from you. Amen. I say with some of these sins, you can't be too careful about it. You can't be too careful about it. Amen. Call me what you want to call me. Amen. Say what you want to say. Maybe call me fanatical. Call me legalistic. Amen. But there's something that's not going to mess with my peace with God. Money. Money. Amen. The Bible, the Bible says, and there's a reason why it says it. For the love of money. It is the root of all evil. Amen. Money. Amen. People are in their graves today because of money. Amen. People have had their lives shortened. Amen. Because of money. Amen. There are people who have lost it all because of money. Amen. They just, what was it? John D. Rockefeller. They say was asked one time, how much money is enough? How much money? Listen, this man had no financial struggles whatsoever. He said, they asked him, how much money is enough, Mr. Rockefeller? He said, just a little bit more. Just want a little bit more. I just need a little bit more. Just a little bit more. See, listen, it doesn't matter what vice it is this morning you're involved in. Amen. If it puts you in a wrong relationship with God, there's going to be no peace in it. There's going to be no peace in it. Amen. People have sold their souls. For some money. They sold some of their souls for a little bit of money. Amen. They sold their soul. Amen. To achieve what money brings. That fame. That popularity. Listen, being famous does not bring peace. Amen. In fact, in fact, the most, some of the most miserable people in the world are the most famous. Amen. Why do you think, why do you think some of these things we're talking about, drugs, alcohol, sex, are so prevalent in Hollywood today? There's no peace. There's no peace in it. That money doesn't buy peace. That fame doesn't get him to eat peace. Kevin Durant, famous basketball player, one of the best in the NBA, won a championship a few years ago. This is what he said. <clears throat> Direct quote. After winning the championship, I mean, listen, this is what these boys give their life to. You, Kobe Bryant would be up at 3, 4 in the morning at the gym. The reason why he bought the helicopter he died in was so he could skip the morning traffic in L.A. to get to and from his workout facility and get his kids to school on time. Devoted his life. Listen, LeBron James spends a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year just on his body, just to keep it in shape, just to have the right foods, amen, to have the right workouts, to have the best training that it can buy. Brother, they won't put anything in their body. They won't just put this in there. They're consecrated folks. They're more consecrated probably than some people claiming to be saved. Oh, man, they're devoted. 
They're devoted. They're devoted to the... Listen, the best, they're devoted to the craft. They give their lives to it. Amen. And their whole goal, you ask them, you listen to any of their interviews, is to what? To win the NBA championship. I want to get that ring. I want to get that Super Bowl ring. I want to get that NBA ring. Amen. I want it. I want it so badly. They'll sacrifice women. They'll sacrifice their wives. They'll sacrifice their children. They'll sacrifice their personal time. Amen. They will give everything they have. And listen, Kevin Durant got it. He got it. He got the NBA ring. But he had given himself to you. This is what he said. After winning that championship, I learned that much hadn't changed. I learned that much hadn't changed. He went on to say, I thought it would fill a certain void. I thought it would bring me peace. I, I worked so hard. Amen, I wanted it so badly. People may not be slaving like Kevin Durant is and have the faith he has, but they're slaving just so hard, as hard for the devil today trying to get some kind of void filled. There's nothing that can fill that void this morning out in the world. He got it. What he had sacrificed, what he had labored for. Katie, you didn't have to go through all that. Peace was brought to earth 2,000 years ago. It was there for you, brother. Amen. You can win all the trophies. You can pack the bank accounts with $100 bills. Amen. You can have the girl, any girl you want to. Amen. You can go any vacation you want. You can have your dream home. You can have your dream car. You can have Cadillac number two. You can have vacation home number three. You can have your yacht. But it will not fill that void. You, how many people have won the lottery and actually lost all their money? Spurned it. Why? Because it didn't fill the void. He said, I thought it would fill a certain void. It didn't. End quote. It didn't fill it. It didn't fill it. Listen, it's not going to matter what you attain in this life, Satan, sinner alike. It's not going to matter what you get in this life. It's not going to matter what you accrue. It's not going to matter what you experience. It's never going to matter how much you have. It's going to matter, do you have the Prince of Peace on the throne of your heart this morning? Do you have the Prince of Peace on the throne of your heart? You will never have peace until God has the throne of your heart this morning. You'll not have it. Mark chapter 8, please. Just some basic salvation this morning. Mark chapter 8. Amen. May we get our perspective right. Even if we are saved this morning. Amen. Well, let's get our perspective right. Amen. Is Christ in his rightful place this morning? He, the purpose for him to come. Appreciate all the miracles. Amen. All the healings. All the souls. Amen. That he impacted for good. But he came to put you and I at a right relationship with God. That's why he came. Amen. Mark chapter 8. That's worth celebrating. Amen, that's worth, amen, busting the heavens open for. Amen, the Bible says when one soul gets saved, amen, all heaven rejoices. Why? Because, amen, the coming of Christ was not in vain. Amen, was not in vain. Amen, Christ would have come for one soul. I believe that this morning. I believe Christ would have come for one soul. Amen, why? Because one soul is worth all the world. Amen, it's worth all the world. Mark chapter 8, verse 36, for what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world, think about that this morning. Nobody's going to ever gain the whole world. Nobody's ever going to actually achieve it. But he's saying, even if you could, even if the whole world was under your authority, it was under your domain, what's it going to profit you? This morning, if you're in sin, what is it profiting you? What are you really getting out of it? What are you really getting out of it? Amen. Yes, you'll get the thrill. Yes, you get the excitement. But friend, you're going to die one day. And it might be sooner than you realize. For some of us, death might be right around the corner. Amen. Christ himself 
could be right around the corner. My God, see, listen, the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. But it doesn't have to for you. I do not believe this morning that where there is life, there is hope. That just because, that just because you have breath in your lungs, you can get saved. Amen. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. That leads me to know, amen, that you can have breath in your lungs, but God may be nowhere to be found. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 this morning. It was not in our notes, but we're going to read it this morning. Proverbs chapter 1. Let's start with verse number 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. It's before, listen, can you not learn from some of the things that are right before you? God's talked to you. God's convicted you. God's been stirring. And you've seen examples and you see the wisdom of salvation. You see that the folly of the world, you see what it's doing, and yet you remain in sin. I believe there's some, amen, they should be flooding the altar. They should be flooding the altar. Listen, people today, amen, people today have let their hearts grow so hard against the gospel. Listen, I don't care. God help us this morning. I don't care what hypocrite you've known around the church. I don't care what minister has let you down. I don't care so much about the things that you've experienced. Let me just help you this morning real quick. It does not negate the fact that the Prince of Peace came and he overrides what any hypocrite, what any minister, what any experience has ever done. Do not let them rob you of the Prince of Peace this morning. He overrides them. He supersedes them. He's more powerful than them. If you want to be saved, there's not a devil in hell or a man on earth that can stop it this morning. The Prince of Peace can break every chain, can break the past, and they can break the cycle this morning. Let the Prince of Peace have the throne of your heart this morning. Amen. The greatest celebration that the earth ever saw, amen, can be celebrating over your soul. It didn't say one angel rejoices. It didn't say a couple angels. It said all heaven rejoices this morning. Every angel that rejoiced at the birth of Christ can rejoice over your conversion this morning. Every soul that has crossed over the great divide and is sitting up in heaven this morning is waiting for you to come home. Listen, heaven knows what's going on down here. You may say, Brother Nathan, how do you know that? Because, amen, when the rich man was in hell and Abraham was in heaven, right? In the, in the parable. Amen. He said, remember, amen, in your lifetime, Abraham knew what went on in that man's life. Heaven's waiting to rejoice this morning. You don't have an excuse for not being saved this morning. It will not stand in the judgment. It will not stand in the judgment. Why won't it stand? Because the Prince of Peace came. Because the Prince of Peace came. Amen. To save. To seek and to save them which are lost. Verse 24, because I have called. Amen, to turn that down. Amen, to turn that down. Because I have called and ye refused. It's on you. Amen, you can have whatever excuse you want to have. Amen, you can blame whatever you want to blame. People want to blame their parents. They want to blame their teachers. They want to blame the education system. They want to blame society. And there might be some real influences in all of those things that are to blame. Amen. But Christ is available to anyone this morning. 
Come ye, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest to your souls. Amen. Come unto me. Amen. He has water that ye know not of. He can quench the thirst. He can fill the void. Amen. He can bring peace. Amen. You might not have two nickels to rub together, but you can have peace in your soul this morning. Amen. You might be single. Amen. And no prospect in sight. Amen. But you can have peace in your soul this morning. Amen. I'd rather be, amen, in the courts of my God. Amen. I'd rather dwell in the tents of righteousness. Amen. I would rather enjoy, amen, or suffer, amen, the, in this life than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He said, because I've called. You refused. I have stretched out my hand. How many times was I willing to just step in? And, and, there, and not only that, I should have just let you go. You should be in hell. That bullet should have landed right square on your head. That car accident should have taken you out. Amen. And all the things you don't even know about. You were upset that you were sick and had to stay home, but... You don't even know. I pulled the strings behind the, th- the scenes. I've, I've rearranged circumstances. I diverted some things. I sent an angel right there. You should be gone. You should be hopeless. Amen. You should be in hell this morning. Amen. I stretched out my hand. One place he said, look, you were as a, what, a, a, a firebrand. A firebrand plucked from the burning, brother. Oh, man. If I hadn't come, and, you would have been gone. Amen. If I had it just, whoa, whoa, that was close. You'd be in eternity. You'd be roasting in hell this morning. You'd be roasting in hell this morning. Listen, no one goes to hell just because of all the sins they committed. They go because they rejected the call of Christ. Amen. That's why you go. You go because you rejected Christ. All those other things kept you from Christ. But you go because ultimately you refuse the call. It wasn't because the call wasn't sent. I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. But ye have said it not, all my counsel. Amen, I've tried to reason with you. Amen, I've sent things in your life. I've sent people in your life. And would none of my reproof. I think one of the most chilling verses. I also. Oh, don't believe for a moment that God is, not without, that God is without a response this morning. You're going to need God one day. Oh, you're going to need the Prince of Peace one day. Amen. You're going to need him one day. Oh, you're going to cry for him one day. You cry now or cry later. You cry now, you cry out for mercy now, or you're going to be crying for all eternity. Amen. I will laugh at your calamity. I will laugh, meaning I will mock. I will mock at your, oh, you want me now. Oh, now you need me. God save me. God save me. Well, okay. Where were you when I convicted? Where were you when the fourth verse of, oh, why not tonight, was saying three times? Where were you? Amen. Where were you when you were alone in your bedroom and I troubled your soul? Amen. Where were you? Amen. When I showed mercy and showed mercy and showed, and now you're in a fix. Now you want me to just jump. I called. I called. I called. And you let me know you weren't interested. You let me know that you weren't interested in the Prince of Peace. Oh, you were too busy. Oh, you just wanted one more thrill. Oh, you just want... I'm not available now. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. See, listen, you sow to the wind and you're going to reap the whirlwind. You better be careful what you're sowing this morning. Amen. Oh, they say sow your wild oats and do this when you're young. Listen, you're going to reap one day. Oh, you're going to reap one day. Amen. It'll catch up with you eventually. Cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. 
They shall seek me early. But they shall not find me. They would none of my counsel. For, they, for that they hated knowledge. And did not choose. Choice. The fear. Of the Lord. You have a choice. You have a choice. You can take the Prince of Peace this morning. Amen. You can take the Prince of Peace. Amen. Or you can reject it. But you will never find what you're looking for. John 14. We might just close here this morning. John 14. <clears throat> Verse number 27. He said, Peace I leave with you. How could he, have, how could he be leaving peace? Because he was going to the cross. Amen. And because he went to the cross and shed his blood, man could be put in a right relationship with God because they could claim the atoning blood of Jesus Christ on their behalf. He said, peace I leave with you. Why? I'm leaving. Because, but this is how I'm leaving. I'm leaving by way of the cross. I'm laying down my life so that you can have peace this morning. He said, peace I leave with you. Not as the world giveth. What's he mean? The world can give you a false sense of peace. Amen. People think that their money or their associations, amen, or their family or their name, amen, or their career, their education, they put a lot of security. They feel they have a lot of security with those things. Amen. But what you'll learn about the peace that the world gives is that it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. You need more education. Then you want another career. Then you need more money. Amen. Then you need more and you need more and you need more. And it does not satisfy. Amen. The peace that God gives is eternal. It will last through this life and through the ceaseless ages of eternity. Real quickly, to the saved this morning. Martha had invited, if you read the story, she had invited Jesus over. And when Jesus came over, her sister Mary went over to the feet of Jesus and just listened to him talk. And Martha, seeing this, was not very happy about what had just transpired. And she even asked the Lord if he cared. Do you, do you, do you see what, like, hello, I'm over here slaving in the kitchen. I'm doing the dishes. I'm, I'm trying to make sure Jesus has a good time while he's here and really would be nice to have a little help in the kitchen. It would really be nice to have Martha or Mary stop talking for a minute. And come on over here. But what did he tell her? And I believe Jesus was speaking more to Martha than just what was happening at that precise moment. He said, Martha, Martha, you're cumbered. That word cumbered means you're troubled. Look, Martha had a good relationship with Christ. He loved going to their house. She was a Christian. She was a follower of Christ. But she had let her heart get troubled. You're cumbered about. With too many things, Martha. You're troubled about too much. Mary hath chosen. She chose it. Not because she doesn't want to help you, Martha. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. But I'm here for a short time. Mary has chosen that good part. What's he telling Martha? When I leave, even when I leave the house tonight, the kitchen's still going to be there. The dishes will still be there. Amen. There'll still be those responsibilities. But you need to choose the good part. It doesn't mean that those things don't need to be done. But they're troubling you. They're troubling you. They're affecting you in a way that, Martha, I'm not even sure you're really seeing it. He said, Martha, Martha cumbered about. You're troubled. Yeah, I could tell Mary to go over there and help you, but
But that's not the issue here, Martha. Amen. You're cumbered about with too many things. Amen. The Bible says he'll keep your mind. A, a mind that has stayed on him will be kept. Isaiah 26, 3. He will keep his mind in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. The Prince of Peace this morning is available to every one. He did not come to just the shepherds. But he said, I'm, he's here to, to all nations, to all people. The word peace means harmony. It means concord. Or a state of reconciliation between parties at variance. Meaning that before we were all saved, anyone would say we had an adversarial relationship with God. But because Jesus came, the Prince of Peace came, he reconciled, bridged that gap, and brought us into concord, and brought us into a right relationship with Christ. And after you're saved, the devil wants to break that concord. He wants to break that because he knows if I can get your peace, I can get you backslidden. If I can affect your peace, amen, if I can affect your peace, I can affect your relationship with God because peace is what puts you at a right relationship with God. And a lack of peace puts you at a wrong relationship with God. May God bless you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness unto us once again. Father, we're thankful that the Prince of Peace has come. And that he has brought peace on earth. Dear Father, dear God, we thank you this morning for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy unto us. We pray that wherever this word may go, that it will find lodging on good ground. Father, we pray for every soul that might be convicted, that is weigh, weighing it out, dear Father, dear God, hanging in the balance, dear Father. We pray that even maybe this week, dear Father, dear Lord, you were, your spirit would save a soul, dear Father, dear God, and bring people to the cross. And Father, dear God, to see that you have nothing but good for them. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' precious name, amen.